Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks. I'm here at IFA 2014, and goodness gracious, has there been a lot going on. I'm gonna focus in on productivity, because I'm a girl who likes to get things done on the road, and IFA has presented many different options for ways that you can choose to use your technology while on the go. I'm gonna get started with the Acer Switch 11. We've seen this form factor before from Acer. It's an 11.6 inch device that you can detach the screen. So it is a two-in-one or a convertible. It's running Windows 8.1, and what I like about it, it has a variety of USB ports and you can turn the display around so that you can use it as a content consumption machine. So you kind of like are able to tuck away the productivity and just use it for kind of good times and shits and giggles when you watch movies just using the tablet form factor or in the, in the stand mode. Keeping in the same convertible family, Acer is something a little bit different with their R13. This is a 13.3 inch convertible where the display actually flips around. What's cool about this is they've kind of dropped the metal frame from the top, which drops the weight of the device. It's only 1.5 kilos. And what's nice about it is that you can kind of hover the display flat and type underneath it. It's a really kind of unique feature and a really different take on doing a two-in-one. It obviously comes with Windows 8.1. It's running Intel's Core M, and it's got a WQHD display. Now the two-in-one form factor isn't just for being on the road. If you're somebody who's looking at at-home portability, HP has a really interesting lineup with the NVX2. It comes in a 13.3 and a 15.6 variety. And what makes this neat is it has a kickstand on the back and then a soft Bluetooth keyboard. HP makes some of the best keyboards in the industry. And this one is even backlit, which I can't stress enough is super cool. Now, how I see the NVX2 playing out is in a at-home kitchen scenario. I think that this is going to be the perfect kind of kitchen PC where you can set it up, you know, you can use your cooking videos or you can just use it as a straight multimedia content, content consumption machine in the kitchen. If you're looking to be a road warrior, personally, you cannot go wrong with the ASUS ZenBook lineup. I am currently a UX 301 user with the Iris graphics, but if you don't need that extra multimedia punch or you're not into gaming, which is kind of fair enough to me, and you just want like a dead sexy laptop and you don't want to get a MacBook Air, seriously, the ZenBook 305 or X305, it's gorgeous. 12.3 millimeters thick, running Intel Broadwell M, which is the new processor from Intel. So that's 13.3 inches, 3200 by 1800 display. So it's stunning, crisp. ASUS does a great job with designing products. So to me, something for on the road, this is a machine that you should definitely take a second look at. And you'll be able to get it before Christmas, which is even more exciting. Now let's move on to smartphones, because you can't look at IFA and not be bombarded with a bevy of new handsets. Samsung just flooded a bunch of us. The biggest one was obviously the Galaxy Note 4. Now, I'm not the biggest Samsung fan. Everyone in the world seems to be. I just thought it was a nice little incremental update, much like the Sony Xperia Z3. I am a LG G3 user, and I am not that happy with my phone. And I've been holding off on going back into Windows Phone because well, I wanted the 930, but let me tell you all about this launch that Nokia, Microsoft Nokia, did for the 830. So this is a mid-range handset that they're positioning as a flagship device. And it's really interesting because I thought there would be a lot of kickback um, about it coming with a Snapdragon 400 processor. But the internet seemed to be fine with that. And to be honest with you, the thing that I think a lot of reviewers don't really realize about Windows Phone is that you can run a Snapdragon 400 processor on a Windows phone and a Snapdragon 400 processor on an Android phone and it's going to run better on Windows, right? Older processors are snappier on Windows because there's not, like Android has to cater to everything, whereas Windows is like laser focused. And when you're laser focused, you can create awesome things like their 10 megapixel camera, Carl Zeiss lens. There was also another phone released, the 730, that uh, it kind of likes the selfies, it has a wide angle lens on the front. Everybody's coming out with a selfie phone these days and well, that's, yeah. If you're excited about that, I'm excited for you. The other hot topic at IFA was of course wearables. The industry is trying to figure out what exactly is a useful wearable. 
There were some really good examples here at the show, and they well, have come back around from kind of a, the ridiculous, like when Samsung announced their first gear. It had a camera on it. It was this thick, and it tried to be the world. Now we're going, ah, Android Wear, let's figure out what's useful, right? So Asus did a mind-bogglingly good job with the Zen Watch. This is a dead sexy device. I'm super excited about it. And I even had an interview with all the people on the wearable team about a ladies version because gender and tech has never been my thing, but we're physically smaller. There was also Sony who stepped away from doing their own operating system on wearables and also joined Android Wear <laughs> with their smartwatch three and then Moto 360. So Motorola had an event at the same time as IFA in Chicago, and they announced their Moto 360, which is a round watch. Still gorgeous, absolutely stunning. So there's, there's a bunch of different ways that people are trying to incorporate uh, Android Wear into fashion items. So I'm excited to see this kind of like real world blending finally happen. Now all of these smart devices have to connect to something. And this is where we're seeing an attempt at a truly connected home. Microsoft's been showing that same connected home for, I don't know, 15, 15 years or so. But I have to admit, with you know, the prevalence of 3G and wireless technology and, well, the Internet of Things, the wireless home is becoming more of a reality. Panasonic had a really killer booth that was kind of weird with putting on fake makeup. But to like, step it back to something that, well, we can all get in our homes right now and today, Amazon released the Fire TV here at IFA, and it's going to be 99 euros. We've already seen it in the U.S. Um, I actually have one in Taiwan, and I don't have a router that allows me to fake being in the U.S., so it's absolutely useless. Now, in Germany, you're going to be able to get a Fire TV, and it's not going to be geographically locked. So you're going to be able to enjoy all the Amazon Prime streaming, all of the latest shows, everything that will make you an internet addict. So this has just been kind of a quick snapshot taking a look at all of the great things that happened at IFA 2014. I'm always excited to attend the show and to see what products are released because this is where we find out what we're going to be buying for Christmas. <laughs> I'm Nicole Scott for Mobile Geeks. Yeah.